Why is Iran, familiar with Russia and China, still alone in the war with the US? Iran many enemies and few friends. A few days before the US struck Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, Mr. Qasem Soleimani, commander of the Iranian Navy, came to supervise Iran's first joint military exercise with Russia and China. In the Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Oman. Today, the era of America's free actions in the region has ended and they must leave this region, Rear Admiral Hossein Kanzadi announced as a Chinese-guided missile destroyer, one Russian destroyer and 12 other warships on joint patrol in the Arabian Sea. However, instead of leaving, President Trump is now sending more American soldiers to the Middle East to deal with Iran. As for Russia and China, these two countries have shown almost no signs that they will participate in this increasingly unpredictable conflict. That means that despite heated discussions that General Soleimani's death could cause World War III, today, Iran cannot rely on any country other than self-reliance and relying on the country's paramilitary network and Shiite proxy forces in the Middle East in its confrontation with the United States. Strategically, Iran is one of the most lonely countries in the world. This country has many countries in the world as enemies and can only rely on one friend, President Assad's government in Syria, said Iran research expert Karim Sajidpour at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in Washington commented. As for Russia, analyst Sajidpour added, the country can receive certain benefits from an Iran that is anti-us, isolated, and unable to export energy resources. While some observers say that Beijing and Moscow will be pleased that the U.S. is drawn deeper into the Middle East crisis because it will give them more free hands when they do not have to deal with Washington, but Russia and China shows no signs that they will participate in this risky US-Iran confrontation. Russia has not shown the slightest indication that it will participate in these events, and is working to stay as far away from them as possible although Moscow will continue to demonstrate its support for Iran by very eloquent statements, said Mr. Ruslan Pukhov, director of the Center for Analysis of Strategy and Technology, a think tank in Moscow. At least in the short term, this will benefit Russia, oil prices increase and Iran, a partner in an extremely difficult situation, will be forced to become more cooperative, this expert commented. Discuss further can't rely on allies. Iran seems to clearly understand its isolated situation, even in its cautious statements after the death of General Soleimani. Spokesperson of the Iranian Armed Forces, Brigadier General Abolfazal Shekharkis said on January 4 that the country will take revenge on the U.S. with tough measures. But Tehran is in no hurry to make this decision. This is a sign that Iran wants to avoid an immediate escalation of tensions because this could cause Tehran to fall into a full-scale war with Washington. Iran is talking about a response, an act of revenge, not starting a war, said analyst Abbas Aslani at the Middle East Center for Strategic Studies in Tehran. Mr. Aslani also commented, if a direct conflict breaks out, I don't think Iran would expect Russia and China to get involved in a war with the U.S. The help that these two countries give Iran is something else, such as political support or support in some international organizations. Whether Russia and China will provide Iran with some weapons and equipment remains a question. Iran is certainly in dire need of advanced military equipment to replace its outdated fighter jets, ships and tanks, but neither Russia nor China can legally provide this equipment when UN sanctions on the Islamic Republic remain. Russia provided Iran with an S-300 air defense system in 2016, but this move came after six years of Moscow delaying the contract and only took place when the country became increasingly distant from the West after the annexation. Crimea Russia-China-Iran, just a symbolic triangle of power in the Middle East? In official responses, both Russia and China criticized the U.S. airstrike that killed General Soleimani, but it all stopped there and these two countries did not promise anything more to Iran. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said in a phone call on January 3 with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that the killing of General Soleimani seriously violates the norms of international law and urged Washington to resolve all issues on the negotiating table. 
Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi later affirmed to his Iranian counterpart that Beijing condemns America's military adventures and that China will continue to play a constructive role in ensuring peace and security security in the Gulf region. Although China has affirmed that it will invest hundreds of billions of dollars in Iran's oil and gas infrastructure, so far, U.S. economic sanctions on Iran have caused these plans to stall. Russia and Iran used to cooperate in Syria, but as the Syrian government gradually stabilized and Moscow found common ground on many issues with Turkey in recent months, the interests of Moscow and Tehran began to divide. Turn. Not only that, Russia and China also maintain close relationships with Iran's two arch enemies in the region, Saudi Arabia and Israel. No one in Russia really cares about Iran and no one considers Iran a partner, so this country is definitely not a friend that Moscow is willing to sacrifice, Mr. Alexander Gavuyev, expert at the Carnegie Moscow Center said. This analyst also added that both Russia and China are secretly secretly happy when tensions between the US and Iran increase in the hope that a conflict in the Middle East will keep these two countries busy in the future. A few years from now and Washington will thus be distracted from its core interests in Eastern Europe and Asia. Promoting allies to embargo Iran, why can the US still only stand by and watch China become a big buyer of black gold from the Islamic Republic? Accusing Iran of supporting Hamas forces, hawks in Washington have asked President Joe Biden's administration to tighten sanctions against Tehran. The reason they give is that the Islamic Republic has exported more oil in recent months than the average month over the past years. However, even if the US makes further efforts, Sanctions will hardly stop the flow of Iranian crude oil to the international market, especially when cheap oil is a product very popular with China. Like Traders, analysts, and leaders in the U.S. oil industry revealed that the transportation and payment network for Iranian crude oil to China is beyond the scope of the US influence. After U.S. President Donald Trump withdrew from the important nuclear agreement in 2018, Tehran faced a U.S. maximum pressure campaign to force the country to abandon its uranium enrichment program as well as cut off its uranium enrichment program. A to the armed forces it supports in the region. Washington even threatens to punish countries that continue to import Iranian crude oil. However, over the past three years, the Islamic Republic's black gold shipments have increased steadily despite pressure from the U.S. as well as reduced Chinese demand due to the epidemic and slow economic growth. Growth Again Iran once again took third place among OPEC exporters. And most of Iran's crude oil is sold to China. The trade is very complicated, with many intermediaries, making it difficult for U.S. sanctions to be effective. The U.S. can only punish companies that openly or indisputably do business with Iran. However, many of these are small entities, said Homa Yun Falakshahi, senior oil analyst at Kepler. This makes it difficult for the U.S. to track. Meanwhile, sanctioning Chinese oil refineries or the state-owned oil company of the world's second largest economy will create many serious political problems in the context of the relationship between the two countries. There has been no shortage of tensions, Falaksha he said. Normally, the US makes full use of financial and trade sanctions against opposing countries. However, the actions of Iran and Russia show that unprecedented measures will be taken to ensure that oil still flows around the world, especially when the profits from this activity are extremely large. Last week, the US blacklisted several United Arab Emirates companies for dealing with Russia. They also fined two oil tankers and their owners for violating the price ceiling imposed by the G7. However, these measures only cause discomfort in the global oil community. They cannot influence transactions when there are dozens or even hundreds of other parties operating shadow fleets to bring Russian and Iranian oil around the world. Especially when there are still big buyers, choosing to put their national interests first instead of following the calls for sanctions from the US and its allies. Although China has affirmed that it will invest hundreds of billions of dollars in Iran's oil and gas infrastructure, so far, U.S. economic sanctions on Iran have caused these plans to stall. Russia and Iran used to cooperate in Syria,
but as the Syrian government gradually stabilized and Moscow found common ground on many issues with Turkey in recent months, the interests of Moscow and Tehran began to divide. Turn. Not only that, Russia and China also maintain close relationships with Iran's two arch enemies in the region, Saudi Arabia and Israel. Reference, Bloomberg.